morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church for worship. I am not supposed to be standing here, but my microphone, my personal one, is not working as of this minute. So um, forgive me, Wally, for, for taking up some of your space. We, uh, Dr. Brown is, uh, has been officiating a wedding out of town and sends his love and, uh, and prayers to us today by way of somewhere in South Carolina. So we'll, he'll be back with us in the morning for um, regular church hours. We have a number of announcements that we need to mention. <clears throat> First, at the end of this service, you will receive a budget for the 2020-2021 year to, over, to look over. And then we will, this Wednesday night, here in the sanctuary at 6.30, we will have a call conference where you can discuss the budget and also we will approve a nominating committee report that will be given at that time. So that's today, that's Wednesday. Wednesday at 6.30 here in the sanctuary so that we can social distance better. So third, if you need to fill out an absentee ballot for deacon, and I, I'm a little bit ahead of myself here. Um, you can do that by coming to the church office and they have to be done between Monday, September 21st and Friday, September 25th by 12 noon on Friday. Okay, and then four, we will have our deacon election next Sunday morning as well as um, our budget vote budget vote is for no discussion that day it's just yes or no and then you will vote on the deacons that you've already received list of um, also next Sunday we will conclude the service with communion so keep that in mind and we will pass out the elements as we did last time so that you will have your own personal one that no one will be handling we are so pleased to have reverend Wally's Todd with us today, and she's not happy at all. Um, but we all know Wally's, and we know and love and appreciate and really appreciate the work that you do for this community and the hard, time, hard work you put in for that. So thank you for being with us today. And uh, I'm going to ask if she would come and give us our invocation as we begin worship. Good morning. It is beautiful to see you here and to welcome those who are listening on the radio and those who are watching online. Um, this is a place where you are welcomed and loved, and we invite the Holy Spirit in now to fill our hearts and our minds and our actions. If you'll join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, for all of us today, it is a hectic, hard time in many ways. Even in my own life, I know I rush and run and worry, and you have clearly taught us that there's no need to worry when we can pray. So we come to you at the beginning of this service, this holy time, this time to worship and to honor you. And even, Lord, while our minds might be racing to the things that are of the world, may we take this moment and pause. May we breathe in deep your peace. May we breathe out anxiety and fear and angst. May we breathe in the breath of life. And may we be ambassadors, Lord, of Christ. Not of our own agendas, Lord, but of your heart for our community, our state, our country, and our world. Lord, today there are people here with loved ones who are not healthy in mind, body, or spirit. And I raise them to you all the known and even the unspoken prayer requests today for family members, for friends, for parents who have lost children, for children who are without parents. 
for the hungry, for the hurting. Lord, as you are Rapha God, would you heal our land? Your word clearly says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and repent and pray, then I will heal their land. And we stand in that truth confidently, Lord, that you will do a good work today and always. And it's in your holy name, Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen.
bless the Lord, you will find this hymn on page four of your bulletin. We will sing stanzas one, three, four, and five. Would you stand as we sing together? page of our bulletin, a prayer litany for, for servants. The difference between a responsive reading and a litany is simple. A litany will have a phrase or more that you will repeat over and over during, this, during, during the reading. This one is Jesus, servant master, help us to joyfully serve others. Join me as we read together. Lord, thank you for bringing us together in service today. As we prepare to serve, we remember you are the model of serving others. Lord, we ask you to help us put aside thoughts of our own comfort or status in order to focus on the needs of others. Jesus, servant master, help us to joyfully serve others. Lord, we admit that we often feel uncomfortable in unfamiliar situations. Help us to forget our discomfort and become focused on you and immersed in serving others as we claim your promise to be among us. Thank you for calling us to be your servant, to be your hands and feet in the world. Jesus, servant master, help us join you. We see your hand in our lives and feel your care and abiding presence each day. Help us to serve joyfully, to see others with your compassionate eyes, and to live each day with a servant heart. Jesus, servant, master, help us to joyfully serve others. Gracious Lord, give us your words to sustain the weary who are among us today. Help us to listen fully to the people in this place as they speak. Give us servant ears and hearts to help us learn everything that you want us to take away from this experience. Jesus, servant, master, help us to joyfully serve. Lord Jesus, we want to be your agents of justice in a hurting world. Help us to hold nothing back from serving others today. As we serve in your name, help us to be open about praising you and giving you the glory for the actions that we will do in your name. Jesus, servant, master, help us. Take our attention away from ourselves so we can focus on you and on the needs of those we serve. Some of us may be tired or sad today. 
be with us and help us to provide encouragement for each other. Give us your strength so that we can be energetic and enthusiastic in our service. Jesus, serve us. Lord God, we ask you to bless this community in which we serve. Jesus, I'm going to ask you to repeat that one more time with enthusiasm. Jesus, servant master, help us to joyfully serve others. Lord, we want to be your servants, bringing about a better world for everyone. You have asked us to follow you. We want to follow you with lives of faithfulness and obedience to do your will. Lord, be present with us at this time in this sacred space as we play a small part in helping to bring about your kingdom on earth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They will know we are Christians by our love is a favorite of Wally's. And anytime she gets a chance, she makes sure we sing this one. So remain seated as we sing together. They'll know we are Christians by our love. It's a 60s folk song that has still remained around us this day. Indeed, that hymn, I believe, is one of the manifestations of the gospel truth for those of us who are called to Christ and are called according to his purpose to be a light into the world. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit. The divine triune God, the Lord of Lord, the name above all names, you are holy and worthy to be praised. You are the Alpha and the Omega. 
You are our Redeemer, our Savior, our friend. But for many of us, Lord, even for myself at a time in my life, you were not our Lord. We can ask you into our hearts, and we are saved from the penalty of hell because of the work you completed on the cross, Jesus. But we're a prideful lot, and we're self-sufficient oftentimes, assuring ourselves that somewhere in your word it says, the Lord will help those who help themselves. But Lord, that's not in your word. We're not to be self-sufficient. We are to be sovereign, sufficient. And as sovereign Lord, you are a master and you are asking us to serve you and to serve others. So Lord, today I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer, may all of our words, may all of our meditations be acceptable to you, and may they serve you in the way that you are most glorified. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you're like me, I am so thankful for Eddie and for the choir and the fact that in these unprecedented times, when we're wearing masks, when we're spreading out, you still feel the joy of the Lord. He didn't say make a perfect noise. He didn't say make a loud noise. He didn't say everybody had to be here. He said make a joyful noise. And because I believe that God hears the prayers of our heart, then I don't even think you have to make a noise out loud. Some of the most joyful praises to God are in our hearts and in our minds. And I would ask that you open your heart and your mind to the reading of the word. Today we're going to be reading John 12, 20 through 36. And I will be most often using scriptures today from the English Standard Version. So John 12, 
20 through 36. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come for this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And the crowd stood there and heard it and said, it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you then may become sons of the light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. To be sons of the light, sons and daughters. If you go back to original language, to the Aramaic, to the Greek, to the Hebrew, you will see that often words are inclusive. I think sometimes we get too caught up in words and semantics. You see that in today's world, in snapshots, in tweets, <laughs> in sound bites. And I don't know about you, but if I had some recording that was going on and they recorded the conversations I had with my friends or my colleagues, or they caught me in a time of real frustration, and then they cut it and they spliced it, I might say some things you'd be surprised. What about yourself? Are there times that when it came to fulfilling the great commandment, love God with all your heart and mind and soul and love others as yourself. Are there times that you didn't fulfill that? There are times that I don't fulfill that. And yet, God looks at our heart. He doesn't look at the little minutes only. He doesn't say that one thought or one sentiment or one soundbite is the entirety of us or of him. Too often in God's word, and I like my sparkly version, too often we'll take a verse or two and we'll build a doctrine on it. And God is asking us to read the entirety of it and to let the Holy Spirit inspire so today I ask you in any day that you listen to a message that is presented by a teacher or a preacher that you would not just accept the word, but that you would go home and verify it, you would study it, you would soak yourself up in the word of God, and you would put things in their context. But the context of the Bible is in its entirety about love. And you may find me twiddling with my microphone because my mask and the microphone did not make friends with each other initially. So please forgive me for that movement. But if our call as sons and daughters of the light is to be ambassadors for Christ and examples of love, then today what I want to talk with you about is how it is possible to lead with a servant heart. When I was praying about seminary, it had been a lot closer to home 
to find a seminary on the East Coast. Instead, as many of you know, though I grew up in this church and this congregation commissioned me to the mission field, when it came time for seminary, I explored and prayed and the Holy Spirit led me to Los Angeles where I attended a seminary and earned my Master of Divinity at the King's University. And one of the main reasons that I felt led after visiting numerous seminaries and praying about where God would lead me, that that became the verified choice, place for me to be, is because all the pastoral classes were the servant as. The servant as. The servant as pastor the servant as counselor, the servant as administrator, the servant as. The focus was on servanthood. Because one of the things that makes Jesus unique and dynamic is that as the savior of the world, he came as a servant. And as the reflections that we are supposed to be, as the light that we are supposed to be, we then are supposed to be servants. And I don't know about you, but I don't see that in our leadership today. I often don't see it in our churches. I don't see it on our committees. I don't see it in our deacons. I don't see it in our council members. I don't see it in the places in which we have the most opportunity to reflect the heart of God. Because we have a tendency to let our pride and our decisions be more about our own agenda than about serving the Lord and serving others. I've loved Dr. Brown's messages as he spoke about what it meant to serve. As he studied the etymologies and the roots of the words in Greek and Latin. So when we look at Jesus, he is to be our role model. He is to be the example that we are to follow. And he didn't come with arrogance or pride. He didn't come seeking to uh, have all the attention on him because of his personality or his specific um, traits that would lead people to think that it was okay to be personality driven alone. He chose to reflect his heart the heart of God, that triune God, and he lived it out in every way, even when he had the power to speak words of cursing, to speak words of death. Our God could do that. And yet Jesus came as light and as love, and he led with a servant heart. So let's talk about the word lead. Lead is often what we think of as someone is a leader of a group, of a line, follow the leader. Remember in school, the person at the front of the line, follow the leader, whatever they did. If they marched, you marched. They raised their hands, you raised your hands. But lead is also something that means the first thing you do. I was recently talking to a pastor friend of mine, and I was telling all of the details. I was getting caught up in the minutia of a particular decision that needed to be made. And I was telling the facts and the figures, and I was giving all the reasons that logistically and academically we needed to handle it a certain way. And then I brought up a spiritual component that was a concern, and he said, you should have led with that. See, it didn't matter as much the details and the dynamics as it did. Where is your heart and what is the spiritual component of that? Lead with that. What is the first thing that people experience when they're in your presence? What do you lead with? It doesn't have to be an extroverted personality. It doesn't have to look like the world says it's successful. It has to, I believe, if we are called and you are according to God's purpose, leading as Christ did, it has to be with love. They will know we are Christians by our love. So what does love look like? There's no simple two-line explanational answer for that question because love is going to 
be led by the Holy Spirit, and it is going to move and minister according to the moment. And I say that because when I say ministry in the moment, it means that it is a healthy thing for us to always go to the Holy Spirit, for us to always ask, Lord, in this moment, how can I minister with love? Sometimes that's going to mean not expressing your opinion. I have a lot of opinions. Do you? And I have found that the Lord has muzzled me in many cases. <laughs> and if you know me, you know talking is one of my favorite activities. And yet the Lord muzzles me because he says, it really isn't about your opinion, it's about my grace. And it's about my love, and it is about how we will walk out the great commission and the great commandment. If we're to go ye therefore and make disciples in all the land, notice that didn't say, go ye and make converts. It doesn't happen like that. It builds relationship for discipling. It didn't say, go ye and build people who agree with you politically. It didn't say, go ye and build up consensus of your particular agenda with your particular goals said, go ye therefore and make disciples, which meant disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord. And that means there needs to be ministry in the moment. The way it was done before may not be the way it is done now. The way we grew up doing church may need to have some modifications. Look at us now. Would we have imagined, even seven months ago, that a pandemic would so impact our land and world in so many ways. But guess what I know about God's word? Even when the world changes, God's word does not. It's not up for rewriting. It's not up for cherry picking the parts we like that match our agendas or thoughts of how we help and love others. We don't get to just love if we're a follower of Christ. We don't get to just love and be kind to the people who think like we think, who act like we act, who live like we live, who, who look like we look. We are called to love them regardless. And y'all, the fragrance of heaven comes out in the truth of love. The world really doesn't need your opinions very often. It needs your love. It needs you. It needs us. It needs all of us to be so in tune to the leading of the Spirit that we will literally hear, as the Scripture says, not the right but the or the left, but this is the way. Walk in it. Inside of your bulletin is a folded handout from Community CPR. When Dr. Brown invited me to speak, he wanted me to talk about Community CPR. And I thank you for that opportunity. So I'm gonna take a minute or two or three to talk about it, but you have this handout and it has plenty of information on it and it has ways in which you can be in touch and information on the back that is important to the ability to fulfill its commission. But I want to tell you how it got started and why I have a butterfly bag on the pulpit. After Hurricane Matthew, I attended meetings that were led by members of FEMA and HUD, the Small Business Association, local government representatives were at these meetings. And I was drawn to help five families in Fair Bluff whose homes had been flooded in Matthew because I had connected with them after writing a story for the news reporter in 2016. After I had been to the emergency shelter in Fair Bluff and seen what it was to be someone whose entire belongings had been waterlogged and destroyed and they were staying on emergency cots with tubs at the end of their cots with all of their earthly belongings. 
Now, if you'd asked me before Hurricane Matthew, what did I feel that God's call was in Columbus County for that season in my life, it would not have been to start community CPR. Because often the way that we love and the way that we listen and the way that we do ministry in the moment is to be so in tune with the Spirit that we're going to do that which is in front of us after we've prayed, Lord, if what is in front of us is what you want me to do, then give me all that I need to fulfill your will for this project. So Community CPR stands for Connecting People and Resources. And it's a nonprofit that you, many of you, have supported after we have helped people after hurricanes Matthew and Florence and now during the pandemic. For many of you that knew that I grew up in this church, knew that I accepted Christ as a mission friend aged child, went on to be in Act Teens, Youth Choir. You commissioned me to the mission field where I served in Europe with Trans World Radio. And after I earned my Master of Divinity, this church ordained me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it might make common sense, it might be the way of the world, that if you're ordained as a pastor, you're going to spend every Sunday preaching somewhere. And for some, that is God's call. But in this season in Columbus County, with the help of so many people. I have had the honor and privilege to represent this church and the gospel of Jesus Christ by, as Eddie read in the litany, being a part of the hands and feet of Christ. And this bag was given to me by Francis Dillingham Price. And I may not always be able to talk straight through some things. <laughs> Mama P, to me, was one of the most beautiful examples of someone who led with a servant heart. And her and my Papa P talked about butterflies a lot and how that represented new life and transformation in Christ. And y'all, we have the opportunity if we lead with a servant heart to be a part of transforming lives. Yesterday, on my phone, I had two voicemails. I was out of town. They were from Mama P security system. I had the privilege of having a mother and father who gave me life and reared me in the Lord and set the most amazing example of what it was to be ambassadors for Christ. And then I got the privilege of being adopted as an adoptive daughter, and I got to expand and see what it was to operate in kingdom mentality. Kingdom mentality. That's different than the world's mentality. Because kingdom mentality is saying that the kingdom of God, the will of God, is what we are to walk in. And it says, as we often pray with Dr. Brown and in our upbringing, that may it be um, as in heaven on earth. Do you know that we don't have to wait until we're in the full presence of God in heaven to actually experience what it is to walk with him and talk with him and introduce him to others by our actions? It's not all proselytizing. It's not all tweeting or Facebook posting or conversations in the coffee shop. It can include that. But the most effective way, I believe, to lead with a servant heart is to lead like Christ. There's a few of you that would have picked up the handout when you came in. It's on the table when you leave. But if you have this handout, I invite you to look at it now, and obviously you can pick up and even take some home if you would like for others. But I want to talk about lead with a servant heart, specifically looking at each one of those words and applying verses to them. And I'm going to weave in some of the stories of community CPR and some of the stories of what we as First Baptist Church have set an example for as we lead and move to the end of this message today. So for lead, 1 Peter 2.21 says, 
For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. If you lead a group, if you lead, as in the first thing people experience, both of those definitions for that word, then you have an example in Jesus Christ. I used to think that somehow it was unattainable because it was Jesus who did it. And while God truly is known that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, we get to be a reflection of him and we have a role model and an example in God's word. If you want to know how to love people, look at Jesus. Lead. He made it possible. If he had just wanted to be, as many people in today's world, an example of a deity that was far away. There are people in this world that are deist, meaning that you're, you, you believe maybe God exists, that there was an intelligent design, but he just kind of put the planets in motion and left us here. Jesus didn't leave us here. He literally took on skin and served as an example of what a human could do. And then when he ascended back into heaven after his resurrection, he always sent the Holy Spirit. And I'm not sure that we are always aware of the power and grace and mercy and love and strength and joy and reflection of God it can be to be led by the Spirit. It isn't God the Father, God the Son, and God the little bird. I say that because sometimes I think we have, have encapsulated the Holy Spirit in the idea of when Jesus was baptized and the dove came and lit on his shoulder. There's a power in the Spirit of God that gives you discernment to know how to do ministry in the moment. And when someone has lost their home, their belongings, their very livelihood, and they come in needing help, if I or you or any of us make judgments that they are doing it different than the way we would have done it, then we are not reflecting the heart of God because we are projecting onto them how we think they should act, how we think their choices should have been. And God is inviting us instead to be with him. So let's look at the word with. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 on your sheet. For those of you that have your phones on your Bible apps. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, say this with me, please. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Y'all, you're not alone. You're not alone. We are not alone. Some of the loneliest times can be if you're in a marriage or a relationship and you're not connected with that person. So don't assume that because someone has a spouse or a partner that they're not lonely. Don't expect that because someone has family that when trauma comes, you know, they're going to have a support system that is healthy. I have experienced story after story after story that there are people in Columbus counties whose very family works to undermine their growth and well-being. I don't know what that's like personally because I have the privilege, the very gift of knowing that Lionel and Rita had no other agenda but for my good. Mom will tell you she wasn't planning me. <laughs> That's a story for another time. She planned all the other three, y'all. Um, and she did everything not to have me. Um, and yet, God chose, as he does for every single life on earth. He chose for it to exist. And we are to care for it in the womb until the tomb. We are to be reflections of God's love and care in every moment of a person's life. We don't get to abandon them when they make choices that we don't like. Now we can have healthy boundaries and we can create 
ways in which to help that do not enable or make codependent situations. But if we're leading with a servant heart, we're doing what Mama P taught me. And you know what one of the most powerful things Mama P taught me? She prayed. My mama hits her knees daily and prays. We can be at home listening to this message on the radio or watching it online, and you have, those of you that are there, some of the most powerful positions to play in this world because you can pray. There are those of us that God has called to actively manifest and help people, but you know what? Without prayer, it's not being bathed in the very thing that God has invited us, commanded us, mandated for us to do. And when people get upset that people say, you're in my thoughts and prayers, I find it intriguing. Because when we pray to the one true God that we know, we have invited the Almighty into the situation. It's not passive. And if we can lead with a servant heart, then when we pray, things change. The atmosphere. There's literally, if you look in the book of Daniel, it took 21 days, right, for the angel to come. But when did the angel leave? The day that God sent him when the prayer was asked. And if today you are not aware that just like in Daniel's time, there are things behind the things. Everything we're seeing on the news, everything we're seeing in our communities is not all that there is. If all you're counting on is what your eyes see, you're not being led of the Spirit to see the thing behind the thing. And the way that you know the things behind the things, y'all, is to pray and is to listen. How many of us pray and then don't listen? Lord, help me today as I go out and do your will. Oh, Lord, I've decided that I'm going to go bless this person, and I'm, thanks for coming with me, God. Am I the only one that's ever done that? When we pray, we're asked and invited to listen, to pause, because sometimes our very actions might harm someone because we're not giving them the space in which God can move through other people and do other things. But man, we can get proud about our activities, can't we? Well, we have this group at church and they do this. And we have this opportunity in our civic organization and we do this. And, we, and the whole thing that God has continually brought to my mind is, what is our heart motive? What is our heart motive, y'all? It says that God will not judge by the outward appearances. He will know our heart. And when you and I are standing face to face with our creator, with our Elohim, it's not going to be my mama, mama P, any of y'all that's going to stand there with me. And the same will be for you. As much as you love your spouse or your children or your church, it will be you facing your creator. And he's going to know your heart. And he's going to want to know if that heart was full of love. And if you led on earth as a servant to reflect the truth of how Christ was our example. So let's look at a servant. Matthew 20, 27 through 29. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You men... When you read the scripture about what it is to be in marriage, I always found it interesting growing up that oftentimes the focus was on what women were to do. I'm just being honest, that's what I remember. Okay? The focus was women to do this and women to do that. When it talks about what a man is to do in his marriage, if he is a follower of Christ, if he is leading by example like Christ, it says that men are to be in their marriage to their wives and family as Christ was for the church. And what did Christ do according to Matthew 20, 27 and 29? He came not to be served, but to serve. And note this, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Does that always mean physical life? No. But what if God asked you to give up 
something that was really precious to you in order to serve others. And I'm not even saying that has to be a material good. I'm not even saying that has to be sell all of your material possessions and go to another country and serve. It might be, because he may ask you that. But what if you had to give up your opinion in order to serve others? What if you had to give up the way it's always been done in order to serve others? What if you had to recognize that even though you have a heart that's toward God, you recognize in your heart, as I have recognized in my heart, that there can be pride and there can be subtle arrogance and there can be a, well, I know the best way to do it, so let me tell you about it. God is inviting us with humility to serve as Christ served. To have a heart motive that's not about what we think, but about what he thinks. His mind of Christ. And then what about this heart? Psalm 51.10. This scripture could honestly be a daily prayer, could it not? We could literally begin our days and end our nights by having this particular prayer be so ingrained in our thoughts and in our heart that it becomes the air we breathe and the way we serve. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. You know what is the right spirit? The Holy Spirit. And if we are led by the Holy Spirit, and if we lead with a servant heart, then when it comes to storms, when it comes to the hardships of life, when it comes to doing the actions that God has called us to act on, we will literally, two people, be the hands and feet of someone they may not know, but they'll be so intrigued that they will be intrigued to the truth of God's love if we reflect it, if we serve them instead of serving our own ideas and agenda. So today, I invite you to think about what it is to lead with a servant heart, to be a reflection of people that we have grown up around, those of us that are in the younger generations, although y'all now I'm moving to the older generation in First Baptist Church and beyond, is we have had examples to follow that have been mission-minded. They have reached out to their community. They have served God and they have served others in ways that have invited people into a relationship with Christ, not because they beat them over the head with their opinions or their perspective based on their socioeconomic or educational or outward looks or thoughts, but because they got in alignment with the Holy Spirit and they said, use me, Lord, utilize me in a way that reflects your truth. So I invite you to every day and in everything you do, pause, pray, invite the Holy Spirit into every move you make, ask the Holy Spirit to embolden you to both share the gospel when it's called for in words and in actions but to also at times just listen and pray. And as Mary did, ponder things in your heart, knowing that God is showing you something and he will lead you to what he needs you to continue to do to reflect his truth. Please do look over the information for Community CPR. I would be grateful for opportunities to talk with you about it further. You're welcome to come see what we do at our location. But to me, it was more important that in this time and in this season that is unprecedented, we focus on truly what it is to lead with a heart that's like Jesus. And he's a servant leader. Even unto the point of death. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, gracious God, if there was anything said today that was not a reflection of your truth, may it find no fertile ground. And all that is true, may it be planted deep in our spirits 
may it germinate, may it bloom, and may it flourish for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to be singing, Eddie, um, hymn number 611. Let your heart be broken. Please stand as we sing together. we have our benediction um, I asked Mr. Joe Hooks as our um, stewardship and finance chairman do you have a word to say before we close a short word didn't want to leave you out Wallace, thank you for being with us today and sharing your heart that God has led you to share. And uh, thank you so much. If you will conclude us with a benediction. As a benediction, I'd like for us all to look at together. Um, worship is not about someone speaking at you. It is about being with you in the Lord. Would you look at the last verse of let your heart be broken and let this, as we read together, 
be our benediction. So again, verse number four, except when it says your, would you please replace it with our. Let our heart be tender and your vision clearly see. See mankind as God sees. Serve him far and near. Let our heart be broken by another's pain. Share your rich resources to give and give again. Your resources are your time, your talent, and your treasure. As you leave today and go into the world, may you lead with a servant heart that shares all the rich resources that God has given you. It's in his holy name, all of God's people said, amen. Thank you.